Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's Children's Worship Service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful, and I hope you learned a lot. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time that we have to study your word. God, we want to be worshipers. We want to learn to what it is to worship you, God. So we're moving to distractions right now as we prepare to receive this lesson. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up, everybody? It is so good to be here at the St. John Church. I am just so excited today. So excited I could dance. <laughs> I'm excited to share my gratitude. Now, what is gratitude? Well, gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Now, I just want to say that I'm grateful to all of you. You help me every week by being great friends and learners and, and making my time with you so special and fun. So thank you. Shout out to all of you. So for today's worship, instead of us uh, singing our monthly song, I've chosen one from my probably favorite artist of all times, Mr. Fred Hammond. And I've chosen this song today because it ties so well into today's lesson. So uh, sing along when you catch on. You ready? Here we go. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart I will dance like David danced and The Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart I will dance like David danced I will dance, I will dance, dance. I will dance like David danced I will dance, I will dance, I will dance.
I want to dance like David danced. Listen to David's words from Psalm 86 and 11. Lord, teach me how you want me to live. Do this so I will depend on you, my faithful God. Give me a heart that doesn't want anything more than to worship you. Now, our relationship with God is the most important thing in our lives. We can depend on God. We can trust and believe that God is faithful. Let's head over to our lesson. All right, everybody. So today's story comes from the book of 2 Samuel, which is in the Old Testament. It's a story about a man named David. Now, while David was still a boy, God chose a man named Saul to rule over Israel. But Saul didn't listen to God. And God then sent a prophet named Samuel to anoint David with oil. This was a sign that David would one day be king of Israel. So let's see what happens next. God's story, David and Saul. So part of God's story is about two guys named David and Saul, and it begins like this. You may have heard of David before, the little shepherd boy who stood up to the massive warrior Goliath and won, but that isn't the whole story. In fact, that's really only a part of it. The rest of the story starts with a man named Saul. See, God wasn't very happy with Saul, Israel's first king. The people of Israel had begged God's prophet Samuel to give them a king so they could be more like other nations. God warned the Israelites they would regret it, but gave them Saul as their king. And like anyone, King Saul wasn't perfect and soon started to mess up, disobeying God and leading Israel away from him. And that's where our friend David comes in. God wanted a new king to replace Saul, so he sent Samuel to a man named Jesse. Jesse showed Samuel his eldest sons, big and strong men. Samuel thought for sure that one of these impressive boys was to be king, but God had other plans. God told Samuel to find another son, so Jesse brought in little David. Even though David was a little scrawny and had the smelly job of taking care of sheep, God told Samuel to look at more than his appearance. Samuel obeyed and anointed David, God's special way of choosing people. When David was anointed, the good spirit that had been helping Saul rule left him and was replaced with a new spirit that wouldn't leave him alone. Imagine there was a bee buzzing around in your brain that you couldn't do a thing about. That may be what it was like for Saul. Since Saul was going a little crazy, his servants had David, a great harp player, come to the palace and play music to calm the king. Now, one day, David came to bring his brothers, who were working as soldiers, some lunch. What started out as a lunch delivery soon turned into one of the most famous stories in the Bible, where tiny David took down the massive warrior Goliath with a single stone. After this, David was like a famous rock star. In fact, David was so popular that Saul worried people would start thinking David should be king instead. Saul began to try and kill, sending him on dangerous quests where any normal guy would have died and even threw a spear at his head once. Eventually, things got so bad that Jonathan, Saul's son, who David had become great friends with, helped David escape. David wandered for years trying to stay out of Saul's grasp. Twice, Saul even got so close that David had the opportunity to kill him. But David refused to kill the king in charge. David continued to flee from Saul for years. And without God's blessing, Saul's army was losing to the Philistines. Soon enough, Saul's army had been defeated. Jonathan had died and the Philistines were now chasing them. Saul was so afraid of capture that he chose to fall on his own sword instead of letting the Philistines catch him. When David heard of Jonathan and Saul's death, he went out and avenged them. And with Saul dead, David returned to Israel and at last took his place as God's new king. And that's the story of David and Saul. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made Saul king. Saul disobeyed God. God said he would take the kingdom away from Saul and chose David. David became popular. Saul became fearful of David. David had to run away. David wandered for years. Saul died. David avenged Saul. David took over as Israel's chosen king. And that's a part of God's story. After David became king, 
he led the Israelites to conquer the city of Jerusalem from the Jebusites who were living there in, in the promised land. Now David led the Israelites to completely rebuild the city, but something was missing. It was the Ark of the Covenant. Now when I say Ark, I don't mean like, like a boat like Noah's Ark. The Ark of the Covenant was a beautiful gold-covered chest, and it held the tablets of the Ten Commandments that God had given to Moses. God dwelled among the people at the Ark. The Ark was incredibly important to them. It was very special. And it wasn't in Israel at that time. See, at that time, the Ark was being held at the house of a man named Obed-Edom. And he had in his possession the most precious thing to all of Israel, God's home among the people. And God blessed him. He blessed him greatly while he had the ark at his house. David decided that he wanted to bring the ark back to where it belonged, near him in Jerusalem. So watch what happens next. A long time ago, there was a box called the Ark of the Covenant. It was a holy box that contained items that reminded people of God's faithfulness to them. God's power surrounded this box. Moving it from one place to another required extreme care. King David decided to move the ark to Jerusalem so that he could keep it safe. He gathered 30,000 of Israel's best men to move it. They loaded the ark on a cart and pushed it all the way to Jerusalem. While they moved the ark, David and the men celebrated with all their might. As they traveled, they made a joyful noise to the Lord with all kinds of noisemakers. As they brought the ark into the city of David, the streets were filled with shouts and the sound of trumpets. King David was so excited about the ark's arrival in his city that he was dancing in the streets in his underwear. His wife, Michael, saw this from a window and was unhappy with David's leaping and dancing before the Lord. David put the Ark of the Covenant in the place he had designated for it and went home. When he got there, Michael was waiting for him. She was disappointed and angry. She told David that the king of Israel should know better than to dance around in the streets in his underwear. But David was not embarrassed. He told her that he was dancing for the Lord. He said it didn't matter what he was wearing. He would celebrate and be happy before the Lord. He didn't care what anybody said or what other people thought. King David was so happy that he couldn't contain it. He had to dance and celebrate all the Lord had done for him and his people. David danced to celebrate all that God had done for him and for the people of Israel. That's why he danced with all of his might. David didn't care about looking foolish because he simply wanted to honor God. And that's something that we can do too. We can look back on our lives and think about all that God has done for us and for the people we love. And here's what we need to remember today. It's our bottom line. Celebrate what God has done. God has done so much for us, for each and every one of us. There are countless reasons to be grateful and to celebrate God with the way that we live each day. So let's pray and thank God for that right now. Dear God, thank you for everything you have done for us. You are a good God. You are faithful and, and kind. You are a good father and, and friend. We are so thankful that we can trust you no matter what. Help us remember to celebrate you and share the love you've shown us with the way that we treat people in our lives. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. David saw what God had done for him and all the people in Israel, and he did something about it. He worshiped and celebrated God fully. He didn't hold back. We can celebrate God each day with our words and with our actions. Remember that bottom line. Celebrate what God has done. You can celebrate by spending your time praying and telling God, thank you. You can celebrate God's love in your life by treating others the way you want to be treated. You can even celebrate what God has done by telling people what God has done in your life. 
Of course, the biggest thing we can celebrate and thank God for is that God sent Jesus to be our Savior. Because of Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. That's such good news, and it's worth every dance move in the world. Before we head off to our small groups, let's take a second to say our memory verse together. This is from Psalm 136 and 1. Give thanks to the Lord. Because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Good job. And it's true. God is always faithful and always good. So I want you to think about that as we dismiss. So thank you for joining me this week. And my prayer is that you remember or take the time to celebrate what God has done. Because he's so good. So until I see you next time, may God bless you. And your family, take care. Bye. Through every up and down, I know you're with me. Through thick and thin, I know you'll never leave.